All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. I tried, since Daryl's not here, to share the agenda on my screen, but it won't let me. So Daryl said he would be joining us as soon as he could. So we'll just run through this. Um, I don't know why it won't let me present, but. <clears throat> All right, we will go ahead and call the meeting to order this morning. Uh, good morning. Um, we'll call the meeting to order at 10.07. Um, uh, Tracy, let me look. Yes, I did. Okay. And I'll see if I can't figure out why I can't share my screen so we can look at those when we get to them on the agenda. Okay. Um, just a reminder for roll call and introductions, we don't do those on this call just to the sheer amount of people that join us. Um, I know that Matt said that the link in the invite had the um, sign on for the August call, so I will work with Daryl on getting that updated and get that sent out to everybody um, so you guys can get signed in after we get that updated. We want to make sure that that's all accurate. Um, all right, project updates from Tracy. Um, do you have any update on Shriver? I think that's our last one. Yeah, I think Wes and I talked about that this morning. We are still waiting for them, right? I, Wes, I think that we're kind of at a hold from uh, invoicing payment-wise. We are. Um, the Air Force, um, we've got one, one span in, and they can't seem to find the wherewithal to put the second one in with changing personnel, et cetera. Uh, additionally, the Air Force seems to have changing of the guard on, on what they want to do here. So um, I wish I could give everybody more of an update, but quite literally, that's all we have. It's been very challenging. Um, yeah. Tina, it's, uh, I don't know what I can say. No, that's fine. We'll just keep it on our agenda. Um, and Wes, if you hear anything in the meantime, just let me know. Um, and then we can share that with the rest of the group. Will do. Um, Tracy, I know you sent me the issue tracker. Do you have anything on there that you need to go over? Any updates? Um, I can update on the routing between Pitkin and Vail. Um, we met with both Pitkin and Vail, as well as Entrato and Motorola. Um, we are going to be able to accomplish what they're asking for so that Pitkin calls go to Pitkin and Vail go to Vail. Um, it's a project that Entrato will be kicking off. Um, they're going to set it up on their end as a project so that there's resources and time dedicated to it. And Lumen and both PSAPs will help and jump in as soon as, you know, our assistance is needed. But that, that call went fairly well. Um, I can update uh, the Alley project updates. I, I think I might have shared this last month. We had one. PSAP left and we have completed the alley project. So I'm going to move that to the closed section of the tracker. Um, let me see what else. And I did send you over and Tina, you can distribute it to whomever you feel needs to have it. Um, kind of a EZNet overview of the routing and where things should go and how it should work. Um, Kimberly had asked for that and Intrato provided it to me. So I went ahead and shared that. That's the um, the PDF document I sent to you. I knew Kimberly wanted it. I wasn't sure who else. Okay. And then did you send that to Daryl as well this morning? Yes, I did. Okay. Daryl, can you send that out to the rest of the group? I will. Okay. Thank you. And other than that, those were the only outstanding items on our tracker, unless there's anybody online outside of Lumen that has something else we should be looking at. Hey, do any PSAPs or authorities have anything that we should be tracking that you don't, that we don't have on the list? Um, this is Karina with Delta. Back in August, um, I had the local hospital called 911 and it went to Mesa County and I think Daryl forwarded the information to Tracy. There was a ticket opened. I didn't know if there was a status on that. Okay, Karen, I'm looking at it right now. I have not received anything back, but I can get with Vicki as well as our team and get a status out directly to you. Okay, thank you. I'll work on that today. Thanks. 
Is there anybody else that has anything that they would like Tracy to look at? All right, um, moving on to old business. Is Tim on the call? Or Wes, can you give an update on the amendment filing, if there is one? Yeah, I believe Daryl, and correct me if I'm wrong, he is filing it. We do have a call on that in an hour, uh, well, an hour and a half or so, to talk about the, uh, the tariff amendment that uh, Tim is filing and answer any kind of questions about uh, the uh, what to do if you want an optional module with ECATS um, on the uh, more sophisticated analytics, which right now I believe uh, Douglas County is the only one that uses that uh, through uh, Intrado. But we do have a call on that at uh, the next hour. Uh, so this is Daryl. I part of the reason why I wasn't able to participate at the top of this call is because I was giving presentations to the commission, and one of the presentations was on this tariff amendment and the commission um, in response to the protest letter that was filed from Douglas County, El Paso Teller and Bre uh, Boulder County um, has agreed to um, suspend the tariff um, and set it for a hearing. That doesn't mean the tariff is not happening, it just means that there is going to be a hearing about it instead of it automatically taking effect. Uh, so it will be um, it will be referred to an administrative law judge who will set a hearing date, and um, I will also have information shortly on um, if you want to file comment or file an intervention to become a party in that proceeding, um, the deadline for doing that. Um, and I, Wes, you said that there's a meeting in an hour. I don't, is it, is it something internally? Because I don't think I have anything on my calendar. No, Tim said it, and it's about that, the uh, extra analytics module that's the uh, more sophisticated application that's possible with ECATS. And uh, what, what's on my calendar there? Um, it, um, it's at noon. ECATS okay. noon discussion, Colorado. Let me see who's on it, I think. He sent it out. That was a meeting that we were going to have. Uh, that followed up on the task force call, which ran long, so we had to postpone this. Okay. There's a well, it's probably more appropriate for me not to attend that anyway, because this is now a, a proceeding before an administrative law judge. But, um, but yeah, I do encourage um, Lumen and the 911 authorities to get together and discuss, um, you know, possible resolutions, uh, so that those can be presented to the ALJ when he asks for them. Yeah, and we do have a resolution to that, um, and uh, but I think it works for everybody. Very good, Jackie. Um, yes, I wasn't aware of this meeting either, and I'm not able to make it, which I would be very interested in making it. Um, and I believe West that more than just Douglas is the only one who has it. I believe Arapaho has it. Kathy, don't let me speak out of turn, um, but I believe a couple other authorities have it, um, and I think it's pretty important um, with some of the not the wireless misroutes that I've been seeing. Anyway, um, so I would like to be involved in the meeting, but um, unfortunately, I do have another meeting in there. Now we can follow up with you. Yeah, I got that information directly from ECATS. When they looked up in their records, they said, thought that module was only, uh, the only one they saw was for Douglas. So it could well be that maybe their records are off and the other ones, might, a few others might have it. But regardless of which, there's a way to, there's a way to make that happen, but not to put that financial burden on the rest of the state. That's that's our point: is that we want to have the uh, general ECATS module that was originally agreed to in the SAL work for everybody and for those um, that want something deeper. Uh, there's a way to get that done as well through Entrada. Hey Wes, would you mind, this is Tina, would you mind putting something together after your meeting today? It's with it being super short notice, I don't think anybody's going to be able to adjust their schedules to attend at noon. Would that, would you be good with that? Not sure. Yeah. Okay, Matt, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to note to the group that our three authorities would support adding that service to the ECATS tariff amendment and would be willing to help pay for it. It's, um, you know, for statewide services, it's kind of a two-way street. We get sort of an implicit subsidy in the rural counties, um, and we agree and, and feel that we should be willing to help 
pay in the other direction. Uh, we wouldn't get much use out of that module, but perhaps our citizens would benefit from it when they go to those uh, more populated areas for events and shopping and so forth. So we would support that. That's a good point, Matt. Does anybody have any more comments about the amendment filing? Okay. Uh, Wes, are there any updates to give on the text or the spatial call routing? Uh, Tim is going to, uh, I think, add um, some um, neutral language to the amendment that doesn't uh, negate doing that in the future. But um, the, the GIS portion of that is fairly complex. And so I'm going to have him kind of wordsmith that. Uh, that makes sense. That is something that we can pursue downstream, maybe in the short order. But to right now, we don't want to insert language that might derail the much needed ECATS. That's probably, that's that's the challenge here. Okay, thanks, Wes. Does anybody have any questions for Wes um, about the language for the amendment or the text to 911 or spatial call routing? Okay, um, our next agenda item, Tracy, were you able to get a hold of uh, that contact from Werfano County that I sent you? Yes and no. Um, I did get, well, first I got a hold of Brittany and she had sent me, let me see where my guy went here. Brittany suggested that I talk to a Ray Walsh and Ray was not quite sure what we would be looking for within the equipment to determine if they're bidding eight or 10. So I reached out to Cindy Berry. I'm not sure if she was able to make the call today, but um, I was going to get with her because she had a couple of our, uh, I don't know, call them more advanced technicians that know what to look for in the equipment and see if they might be able to reach out to Brittany and Ray and help them determine what they're looking for in the equipment to know if they're bidding eight or 10. I haven't gotten that name from her yet. Um, but I do have a meeting with Cindy right after this one, and I was going to try to reach out that way to see if we could get them some help. Okay, that sounds good. If you need anything else from me or if I can help facilitate that conversation, just let me know. Okay. Um, and then, correct me if I'm wrong, but DIA is still working on some on-site issues or some internal things that they had to complete? Yeah, the airport, as far as, uh, they're going to have to have new CPE equipment if we need them to bid the 10 digits. Um, they're a transfer piece app, so the urgency isn't quite the same as it would be with someone who, you know, actually takes the live calls. But uh, we do need to continue to work with DIA because they need new equipment in order to make it happen. Okay, great. Thanks. Now their equipment's not that old. Hmm. <laughs> Tracy, this is Tracy. This is Daryl. I I just checked my email and I don't have any of the documents you sent. Huh. So if you could, if you could double check and make sure I was included in the distribution on that. Absolutely. Doing that right now. Thanks. Maybe I have a funky email happening today. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions for Tracy about uh, the ten digit or the overlay? All right, um, the next item, the call routing diagram. Tracy, that's not what you sent, correct? Um, it kind of is, there's not, we don't have a diagram or we didn't receive one from Entrada. What we received is kind of the abandoned rolling guidelines, if you will. So it's actually a PDF document that explains what happens through the different ESINET um, routing processes. Okay. So it, it'll show alternate routing um, is automatic. It doesn't require PSAP intervention. And it says like when 911 sessions um, are up, this is what happens. The primary abandonment route is that. So it's, it's um, a document rather than a diagram, but that is it. Okay, Kimberly, I don't know when you received this, but have you had a chance to review it? And is it what you were looking for, what we had talked about? So I didn't receive that. What I received was specific to an outage we had in Loveland, and it was a almost like a flow chart um, on the path. I can send it to you directly, Kimberly. Yeah, that would be great. So okay. 
I know what this group was specifically asking for too had to do a little bit more with an as built. So language and description on some of these default routing is fantastic. We definitely need that, especially when you know we have a problem that's being described in a PBX with the default route happening. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful, but I also think this group was looking for and some sort of as built diagram too, but I'll let the group speak to that. Well, we'll, we'll have Daryl send out this document to the members and then everybody can have some time to review and then maybe we can discuss, you know, what we're missing, what else we'd like to request um, if the request isn't fulfilled. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the next item is Daryl, do you know if we have an update on the transferring 911 calls to 988? I have, not, you heard I have not heard anything yet, unless any of the um, CenturyLink folks on the line have anything to update on that. Uh, I, Daryl, I do not have anything. So I guess the question comes in, you know, what, what is appropriate um, for transferring calls or regarding 988? Um, I have recommended in the past that 911 centers have a one button transfer, but instead of using 988, they use the, um, the toll free number for the Colorado Crisis um, Hotline Center because if it goes to 988, it has to go through the national uh, voice menu before it gets transferred to a uh, call center uh, for handling by a, um, by a mental crisis health uh, professional. Um, however, there has been some discussion as to whether there should also be the ability to transfer calls to 988. Um, and that's, I think that's a PSAP by PSAP decision to be made. So if there are PSAPs that do want to have that ability, then um, we need to probably get it on the radar for, for CenturyLink to work on. Um, and it will probably also include your um, your CPE vendors as well in that solution. Kathy, I know we talked about this a few times. Is there anything else you want to add or we can just have the, the Lumen folks look into it? Um, well, I know that uh, a few uh, meetings ago when we first brought it up, um, those that were on the call, and I'm sorry, I can't remember if they were Lumen or Toronto, said that it didn't sound like it was going to be anything too in depth to make that happen um, and since 988 went live in july i do have PSAPs in the authority that want the ability to transfer so if we could get a timeline uh, for steps that are going to be taken to to make this possible that would be great tracy or west can one of you work on that as far as the ability for them to transfer if those PSAPs would like to? Yeah, we'll, we will uh, take that inside and see what has to be accomplished to make that work. Okay. Whatever challenge it is with Entrato, et cetera. Okay, Kathy, we'll keep that on the agenda and we'll just keep it moving along. I'll let you know if I hear anything else. Thank you. Um, we don't have any items on the agenda for new business. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to talk about? Okay. Um, this is a time for concerns from PSAPs or authorities to Lumen. Does anybody have anything that we haven't already talked about? Okay, Lumen uh, to Peace Officer Authority. Do you guys have anything, Tracy or Wes? I do not at this time, no. Nope, I'm good. This is Daryl. I, I have one question because, and I apologize, it's because I missed the top of the meeting, but I have to turn in the State of 911 report tomorrow to the legislature. Uh, so I want to verify we are down to one military Peace app that's not on the EziNet, and that's Shriver. Is that correct? That's uh, that is correct. Uh, Cheyenne Mountain, we've uh, got some a line to make that work here. Uh, finished up some things there this morning on that. 
uh, with Buckley working with Aurora, but uh, it seems to be a hard stop at Shriver at this point. Um, and again, as I said before, I, I there's really nothing forthcoming from the Air Force there to, to help us f finish that job at this point. But Cheyenne Mountain and Buckley have, they're on the EziNet now? Um, Buckley is. Cheyenne Mountain, we've got to complete that circuit for El Paso Teller. Okay. On that 100 megabit mo, and then they're going to be switching some uh, end gear around for Cheyenne Mountain. But anyway, there's a there's a pathway to get that done. So um, that will be coming aboard. So it would be an accurate statement in the report to say that there are still two military PSAPs that need to be migrated. Yes, and one of those two will be migrated, but the again with the Shriver. Uh, I can't tell you anything else that would give us confidence that that will come aboard anytime soon. Okay. Um, I think maybe you and I can talk about Shriver offline as well, but um, I just wanted to make sure I had the correct number of PSAPs to be migrated for the report. Thank you. Um, hey, Daryl, while I'm thinking about it, the sign-in list for the meeting today still had the August date. Um, do we need to send out a new link or can people use that one? Um, I will send out a new link so that people can make sure that they register their attendance for today. Sorry about that, everybody. No problem, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I think we're on to public comment. Anybody on the call that is a non-voting member, um, this is your time to provide any items for us to discuss or consider. Okay, uh, one final call. Does anybody have anything else for the good of the order? All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time today. We'll show the meeting adjourned at 1028. Have a good Wednesday. Bye, all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.